watching YouTube, welcome to the channel. I'm Leon and this is Budget Pond Keeping. If you're new or just passing through, please consider clicking the subscribe button. It really helps me out and everybody's welcome. Right, you might have noticed I've got my new hoodie and hat on. Absolutely chuffed to bits with this. I got these from uh, ISL Creations. I'll, uh, I'll leave a link to their website in the uh, description. Yeah, really good quality stuff, like nice thick material, really good quality prints as well. And also what they gave me, which I was chuffed to bits about, was this. It's even got my name on. Yeah, but I'm uh, absolutely chuffed with that, so thanks guys. Really appreciate that. Right then, so in this video what we'll do... Um, We'll take a quick look at the fry tank and I'll give you an update on them because they wasn't doing very well at all last week. And um, then after that we'll crack on with this filter build because it's about time. Right, I'll speak to you in a sec. Cheers guys. Right then guys, update time on the fry tank. Yeah, it's been a really bad week. Um, I had lost about 10 or 12 fish in the end. Um, yeah, it was really going south. Oh, I'd put the aquaflavin in, which meant I couldn't treat for the costia, which I'd later found. Um, and then through the week, I was just losing like a couple of fish every day. And it, 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 I'd done a scrape. I'll put a picture up here now of the scrape or a, a little video. They were absolutely riddled with costia. It just exploded over that week. So um, what I ended up doing in the end was I did... Um, a massive water change as soon as I'd found out that I had the um, costia to try and get rid of some of the aquaflavin then I waited another two days done another big water change then the following day after that I treated with formalin and malachite green uh, since then I've lost no more fish um, nobody's clamped everybody's I mean there was two fish in here and the fins were quite tattered and damaged they seem to be on the mend already uh, the colours coming back, yeah. So all signs are looking good at the minute. If it looks a little bit cloudy at the minute, it's because I've just put some KH buffer in there because my KH was down ever so slightly. Like, um, haven't been feeding these dudes much at all because um, the aquaflavin has probably knocked the filters back a bit. So, but the tests are good. Tests are good because I did I did uh, add a load more bacteria after I'd done the first water change. Like, so yeah, but. Um, signs are really good on here so um, touch wood everything carries on as it is at the minute and uh, next week we'll bowl a load of these guys up and we'll have a proper look at them because uh, it's really hard to see the size while they're in here especially when you've got sheen on the water and you can't see them like but yeah they're all looking a lot happier and a lot more uh, a lot brighter again that one there I'll say that one there when there's about 30 but yeah it, the one that, that just flew past wherever it's gone there his fins were really really tattered um, and I don't know if he's going to come past again now but yeah they're seeming to be growing back so uh, give these a tiny bit more food but yeah I hope you can see them there they're all looking a lot lot better now so that's a brief update on that. In my next video I'll give you a proper update on them and how they're doing and everything like. But yeah, for now, let's go and crack on with this filter build. Right, I'll be back in a sec. Cheers guys. Right then guys, here we go. DIY filter time. Um, these are all the bits we're going to need to do it. For, well, to do it how I'm doing it anyway. So we need nine strainers. Strainer cages, cockney koi. Um, we need 12 90s, 12 90 degree elbows. We need nine tank connectors. Uh, we need two T pieces, three gate valves, one hose tail connector, some solvent glue, solvent weld glue, whichever you choose to use. This is the one I normally use because they sell it in screw fix, it's easier to grab. Um, then you're going to need your pipes, some inch and a half pipes, if you're doing it in inch and a half, that is. Obviously your three barrels, uh, something to cut your holes, these are the best, they're only cheap, your local DIY store, 5 99 this was, uh, it's done me, done me proud that has, uh, yeah a drill to drill your holes, possibly some CT1, it's always good to have it even if you don't need it, just for round the uh, tank connectors, I've got some washers, 
rubber washers which will help but I haven't got enough to do every single fitting so we may need a bit of CT1 and then finally something to take your burrs off either a Stanley knife or a file or if you've got one a deburring tool which I do want so yeah right I'm going to get all set up and uh, take you through the process let's crack on okay right so what I've done first is because I'm notorious for cutting holes in the wrong place if you watch my DIY backy show video you'll know what I'm talking about so yeah right so what I've done is um, I've marked all the points so the inlet's going to be around this side uh, which will have the hose tail connector to it I'm going to have a tank connector here tank connector here with a gate valve so from this tank connector we're going to have an elbow going to the bottom of the, the next tank so the water will come in fill up through that tank connector and drop to the bottom of the next one go up to another elbow do the same to there and obviously gate valves on the bottom of all these um, then on this one uh, I've got the whole that needs scrubbing out because I don't need one there. All I need for this one is a hole on this side, which will be the return into this new tank. Um, but what I plan to do is next year, sorry, I'm banging into things here with this tank. I've measured it down here. Sorry about the mess. If I remove this post and this banister that will fit uh, perfectly into this space here, that tank. So my plan is to put a form across there, around these sides, I don't need one there because it's slabs and gravel boards. F uh, make a nice concrete pad, get this over and down there, and then the filters can sit there on this um, bit of patio and just flow back in, like. so that should be perfect. But as of now, this is where we are and this is where it's staying, because it's uh, going to be a nightmare to move and I do want to get it up and running really so yeah I'm waffling on again now so let's get the drill out and start making some holes cheers guys okay right then I've got my uh, hole saw bit into the drill I'm going to do the inlet first and then we'll crack on with the rest Okay. Right. So yeah, that's the first hole done now. What I'm gonna do now is go round, clean all these burrs off. Just gonna get a bit of sandpaper as well, just to make sure it's nice and flush, and then we can fit the first tank connector. Right, I'm gonna get this trimmed up now and I'll be back in one sec. Cheers. Okay, so that's the hole all cleaned up now, nicely deburred. So I'm going to get the first tank connector fitted and then we'll move from there. Cheers. Right, I'm going to fit the first tank connector now. Um, right, I've only got a few of these, so what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to save these, oh, it's not focused, save these for the drain lines, which will be, it's on the other side, but it will be the lowest point on every barrel so there'll be the most water pressure there so and incidentally you want to put your washers on the outside um, I'm sure it's on the outside I'm second guessing myself now but yeah I'm sure you want the washers on the outside so the rest of them I will put a small bead of uh, CT1 around just to stop any leaks like so I'm gonna get this one fitted now get a bit of CT1 round it and uh, I'll come back to you in one sec Right, okay, so I'm going to whack this in now. It's a nice snug fit, so that will it itself actually thread into this hole nice and tight. So, yeah, there we go. And just before it um, 
just before it meets the plastic, I'm going to put a line of CT1 round that. Well, I'll get me uh, silicon ready. Right, so it's got a bead of CT1 around it now. Not very neat, I know. I think I put too much on, to be fair. If you can see all these dark patches everywhere, when I try to wipe it off, it's, it's just literally gone everywhere. So, yeah. Well, you know me, guys. I'm not the neatest person. Luckily, this one is going to be facing that way for the hose tail, so you won't be able to see it. Like so, onto that one. What I shall do is whack an elbow there, and then I need a piece of pipe in that end uh, to thicken this up. And then the hose tail will go that way, so that will be facing that way, uh, and the pipe from the pump will come off down and into that. Like so, yeah. That's the first part done, on to the next. Okay, right, I'm going to drill the next hole now. I'm not going to put you through me drilling every single hole in here anyway. So I'll get these uh, these holes drilled and then I'll sh show you where everything's got to fit. Right, so I'll be back in a sec. Okay, so that's the ne uh, next two holes drilled and deburred. I'm going to get the tank connectors fitted to them now. Um, I will explain everything properly once it's all in situ and set up right like because uh, I want to get it across properly if you know what I mean. So yeah, tank connector time. This bottom one's going to have a rubber washer on and the top one's going to have a bit of CT one. Happy days. Well I've just fitted the bottom one and uh, inside here what, what it will have, this is a drain line by the way, they're all going to have these on. But in this one... Right, so it fits in there like that, look, yeah. I don't know if you can tell, but that's ever so slightly angled up. So it won't get everything right from the bottom. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to use Andy from Derby Coy's tip, what he did on his uh, upflow filter. I'm going to heat this up, because if you look there, I can bend that ever so slightly and get that nice and flat to the bottom. So I'm going to go and grab the heat gun now, warm this up a bit, bend it down and then let it cool into that position. And then that will... Uh, get rid of the waist at the bottom a lot easier so I'm going to go and do that now right just a quick one um, I made a right mess of that one there put in the CT1 afterwards so uh, yeah I'll put it on before so let's see how this goes okay so yeah that definitely was easier having the uh, silicon on beforehand so that's the bottom one with the rubber gasket for the drain line and that is the uh, return to barrel two. So yeah, all this muck on here, um, I'll clean all this up. Once I've finished, I'll get some sort of solvent on it, on a rag, and give it a good clean off, neat and everything up like, you know what I mean? But once it's all dry, right, on to barrel two. Right then, okay, that's tank one done. Uh, CT1 and rubber gaskets on there. Just going to let that dry off now and I'll clean that barrel up. Uh, so I'm going to drill this barrel out now and then we'll move on to tank 3. Right, I'm going to get these old drills deburred and then we'll get the tank connectors in. Right, that's barrel 2 all drilled up now, deburred nicely. Thankfully, on every other um, tank connector, I've got a rubber washer now so I haven't got to have all that manky bloody CT1 everywhere. I don't know if the lighting's really terrible around this side of the garden because the sun's sort of coming across us like, but yeah. I'm going to get these uh, fitted in now and then on to barrel three. Okay, so that's tank two done. And I'm in an absolute state. Got bloody plastic swarf everywhere, sandpaper, God knows what. So yeah, I'm going to have to get the broom out in a minute, but yeah, so that's tank two. Now let's crack on with tank three. Right, okay guys, just drilled the last barrel and in true budget pond keeping style I messed up. Not too bad, luckily. If you see that lip there, I need the tank connector to be just just about there to get the height uh, to return into there as we stand. But, so what, uh, so what I've had to do is to get the tank connector to fit where I want it, I've had to chop a bit of this out and then uh, file it all back so it's flush all the way where the um, rubber grommet, uh, rubber gasket's going to sit. So yeah, I managed to do that. It's not the neatest of job, but 
it's not too bad considering I've done it so yeah let's get these tank connectors in and then I shall show you how we're going to configure it all right yeah what I was on about with the drain lines obviously I want it as flush to the bottom uh, one of the, my subscribers Tommy uh, Tommy Cavan I think his name is or I think it's Tommy Tucker on YouTube I'm not sure but he has come up with the perfect idea Right, what he's done with his barrels and with his pressure filter, he's left a small gap in the middle, he's put a tank connector right in the middle at the very bottom so everything flushes out. So yeah, I'll probably incorporate that into future builds like, but yeah, absolutely brilliant idea that was. So you, you'll have zero mess left in the bottom of the filters like, so yeah. Um, I'll ask him, see if it's okay, and then I'll, uh, I'll pop a picture of his filter setup which is pretty cool i love it like so yeah especially his barrel system but yeah so i'll ask him and if i can i'll whack a picture up there cheers guys all right that's all my bits of pipe cut now to couple the uh elbows to the um tank connectors they're not perfect but they've not gonna be gotta be sorry should i say i'll put a slight bevel on that side just so it's easier to get in I'm going to rough these up with a bit of sandpaper in a minute, but I'm going to dry fit everything so you can see what we're going to do. So I'm going to get these all uh, attached now and back in a sec. Cheers. Okay, so that's where we are at the minute. The uh, pipes joining the barrels are, uh, together. So next what I need to do is fit the drain lines across here. Um, I'm not sure if it's going to work how I planned it to, but we'll have a look. So I'm just going to check a few bits and I'll come back to you in a sec. Cheers. Okay, so that's the main bits plumbed in. Um, I've got to do the strainer cages in a second. So that's the waste there. On the end of here, I'll have another hose tail connector. And then I'll just plumb that into the drain, what's down there. Uh, when I'm cleaning the filters and remove it afterwards. So yeah, I'll get the uh, other bits attached now. And then I'll show you how the whole system's going to run. Right then guys. In true budget pond keeping style. I have made a mistake. It's not drastic. I can overcome it. But you know it wouldn't be a uh, budget pond keeping build. If there were a few mistakes now would it. <laughs> right. So what, what was the mistake. I did not measure. From the uh, entry point. To the lid. For the stra to allow for the strainer cage on barrel one and two. So look, I'm lucky with this one. The lid does go on, but I'll show you now. Just whack that over there. Sorry about that. That, if you can see, I know it won't focus very well, but it protrudes ever so slightly up. So I mean, I could just chop this off with a grinder. Bloody hell, my focus is terrible today. Sorry about all the uh, CT1 on my hands, it looks manky, I know. So yeah, what I could do if I wanted to was chop that off and just stuff a bit of jack mat in the end, that's no drama. Now this one, right, I've tilted it to the side, which I could use it like that, that's no drama. This would be a static bin, but if I turn it to its correct position where I wanted it, you look at that one, that one's bloody even worse. Again, yeah, I could trim it off and stuff the top or just make one of my um, you know it'd be a one inch pipe loads of holes drilled into it net pot in the top and that would solve that like or I could just have it like that it's still going to work how I want so yeah right this is how it's configured then so that's the waste outlet there this is the water coming in from the pump so yeah if I can come back without tripping over Right, yeah, so the water comes in at the bottom of here. This is going to be all static K1 in here. Uh, it'll rise up through the media, fall through that strainer cage, down this pipe into the bottom of barrel 2, which will be a moving bed. So, yeah, the water will come in down there into the bucket, into the barrel, sorry, swirl around through the media and then out through that one. God, this camera work is absolutely shocking. I'm losing light, so my focus is playing up. But anyway, yeah, so it'll come through the moving bed, down that one, into the very uh, bottom of this barrel, which will be some form of ceramic media. So it'll come from the moving bed, down, through here, into the bottom of there, swirl around through the uh, uh, alpha grog or whatever, and then back out there, 
and returning to the pond. So yeah, I hope I've explained that right. But that's all set up. So what will be added to this in the future as well is uh, airline, airline. One to move the K1 and then the other one in barrel one to agitate the media to clean it for when I dump it all to waste like so yeah right so that's where we stand at the minute uh, what I'll probably do though because I've got some um, I've got media in the shower which I can chuck into here um, and then for these two I could just put some uh, brushes in which I've got as well unless I can get my hands on some K1 or some sort of plastic media so yeah right I'll leave it there for a minute and I'll be back soon okay so there we have it other than the airlines it's the finished filter now and the media so yeah just to uh, clarify like the water comes in there via a hose tail from the pump comes in here it will be all static K1 so it will raise up all through that media then out down into the bottom of barrel 2 which will be a moving bed it will come all the way up through there, drop down this one into the uh, this third barrel which will be Alpha Grog and then it will return to the pond. So what I need to do now is I need to get some um, egg crate and then the fine grid that goes over it just to come right above the drain there in each one of them. Um, this one will have an air stone in to clean it so I'll turn it, the air stone on, it will agitate all the K1 and then I'll open the drain and let it all flush to waste. This one will be a moving bed so I can drain it if I need to but I'm not going to worry too much about that. And then this one will be Alpha Grog um, which will be in like onion sack so I can just agitate that. Give it a shake every couple of weeks or once a month or something and then dump that to waste. So yeah um, and then at the end of here is a hose tail connector. Um, none of this is solvent welded yet it's just all dry fitted so all I'll do with that is I'll come with some um, 38 mil pipe whack it or whatever size hose I've got whack it onto there tighten jubilee clip down stick it in the drain and yeah jobs are good and like so yeah I think I'll uh, I'll leave it there and I'll uh, flip the camera around and sign off so yeah I'll speak to you in a sec right then guys we'll leave it there for today uh, hope you enjoyed the video and hopefully somebody's found this useful and can implement that filter system onto one of their ponds or tanks uh, that filter will be capable of doing a much bigger tank or a medium sized pond um, it's just you know you want as much filtration as possible like and you know your options for media are endless so yeah um, but then yeah as always guys thanks so so much for watching and I'll speak to you soon cheers guys